after e4, c6, knight c3, d5, knight f3, black is playing the card, card we're playing the two knights. In this video we're gonna go through a little bit of everything, of all the things we haven't gone through yet. Let's start with this. Pawn takes, knight takes back, and now knight f6, as we know we have to take. And after e takes back, we play d4. So the variation, this is the main, the main move, right? Both players have played the main moves. The variation we're going to go through is the following. Bishop to d6, bishop to d3, we've, we've gone through something like this. Uh, castle, castle, and now bishop to g4, rookie one. And this is the novelty, bishop to c7. This move, the idea here is to play queen to d6, dismiss this knight, and obviously go for checkmate in h2. Now that's very basic, and of course we're not meant to fall for something like this. But the problem of this is not just the, the main threat, but rather the forcing moves that come with that. So what's the best way to continue now? Bishop to d2. And after queen to d6, now we have, the opponent has a threat of taking the knight. And here's the best move for white. h3. Hehe. <laughs> Completely careless. For example, bishop takes, queen takes. Now we just want the bishop pair. There's absolutely nothing for black. Oh, and by the way, if the bishop hadn't taken, but then, you know, like, the game would have transposed into something we already know. So here, bishop h5, you will play c4, and the idea of playing c5. And obviously, you're going to have to take the game from here. But to see how to deal with this type of structure, you're going to have to look at all the other videos that have been made about the Karokan. Here, the idea is obviously to neutralize this threat, which is a bit annoying. And then carry on. If black plays b6 with the idea of stopping c5, then you play g3 with the idea, obviously, of playing uh, bishop to f4. And that's it. This is completely neutralized. So let's see how to neutralize the, this line in case our opponent takes the knight. So here, after h3, bishop takes, queen takes, and now queen h2 check. Only move is king f1. This is all under control. So in this position, let's see what can happen. Okay, let's say knight a6, whatever, developing. This is the stupid move, just to see how what we're threatening. G3. And now we're threatening a very simple move, which is king to e2. Rook h1 will trap the queen. If the queen is that kid, uh, takes in h3, then she's already trapped. Bishop f5 traps it. Besides, you also have rook h1 coming anyway with a lot of attack on h7. It's a devastation. And the checks of the rooks don't really bother. So bishop f5 will be the winning move. Okay, so this is what we're threatening. Let's say if the rook comes with the check already, just, just block with the bishop. If rook takes, take back with the king. It's important. The queen needs to remain in f3 to guard h1. So now you know what we're threatening. Go back to this position. We don't get to move two, two moves in a row. We can't play king e2. It's black to move now. But you know what you're threatening. You know the plan. Obviously, you're thinking, okay, queen is 3 check. Okay, but then king to g1. And now, again, bishop f5 traps the queen. What is our opponent going to do about it? Let's say move the queen away from danger. Let's say queen to d7. This looks controlling this file. We got the bishop pair, they're really strong. Position evaluated as if we were up a piece. All we need to do now is play king to g2. And then we got lots of attack on h7. We're going to capitalize on that square. Pushing g6 is really stupid because you got an attack on f6. Pushing h6 to kind of you know try and stop that doesn't work because you just play rook to h1 anyway the black pieces are completely useless the threat here is bishop to h6 winning the game on the spot okay so let's make a recap so we familiarize better with the patterns here and then take take knight f6 okay take take with e d4 bishop develops bishop d3 castle castle bishop g4 Rook e1, and we're looking at this move, bishop to c7, bishop to d2, queen to d6, attack the bishop, we're looking at the line bishop takes, queen takes, queen check, it's pointless, king moves, and now let's look at this move, knight to d7, that makes much more sense than knight a6, obviously knight a6 was just an example to show what plan we had, and how this query here is rather a weakness for black, rather than a strength, Queen to f7 comes now, and they threaten checkmate in h7 and attacks the knight as well. And there was like, you know, what else do you want to see? The knight can't really develop anywhere. Let's see, what else can the rook not move there? Let's say to e8. No, we can take it for free. There's, there's nothing really. What are you going to do in this position? I don't know, rook d8 maybe? But this comes with rook e7. Attacking the bishop. And the bishop can't just move away. 
because we will simply play rook a to e1 and that's it, it's too much pressure on the back rank, we're completely winning position evaluated plus 6 or something like that so obviously this can't really be stopped with rook because the back rank of the opponent is weak you also have potential ideas of bishop takes with check, queen takes and then queen to f7 I don't know, you can figure it out from here so now we're going to go through something completely different here d5, knight f3 and now we're looking at the, the early bishop g4 okay, attack it immediately as we know and there's two lines that we haven't seen out of bishop takes f3 and bishop takes c5, uh, bishop to h5. We've seen extensively both of these moves and all the things that can happen by now. If you've been watching this, uh, how to beat the Karakhan saga, you should be really good against it. But there's two types of variations, uh, types of setups that we need to know how, what to do against. Let's look at one line from bishop h5 and then we're going to go through bishop takes. So now as we know we take this pawn, pawn takes back. And now all fourth moves, g4, bishop has to move, knight e5, threatening to take this bishop, but it depends on what black does. If black plays this move or this run, obviously, we'd be very happy to take. Depends on, you know, obviously, go and watch the other videos so you understand this specific pattern very well. The move we're going to go through, the novelty here that we haven't explored at all, is a6. This stops all potential ideas of bishop e5, check, which is one of the crucial moves on how to beat the Karakhan. Now here, you play h4, because that's the plan. Remember, h5 traps the bishop. You can say, okay, bishop e4, but then f3, right? And the bishop truly is trapped. So now, what to do after knight to d7? I've encountered this move personally, and I was a little bit puzzled, because I calculated. And I thought, okay, I'll protect my knight. The problem is that, out of, that, that I don't have my knight anymore. If black decides to swap it, Knight takes, pawn takes back. I don't have the attacker on g6. So that means that our opponent can just play h6, get the bishop in h7, and never worry about being taken, because usually h6 is not possible here because of knight takes, right? We've seen it before. f takes back, and it's a terrible position for the black king. So what to do in this position? Take the bishop right now. Okay, h takes back to open the file for the rook, and now the knight takes in d5, free pawn. e6, attacking the knight and developing. Queen e2, pinning the pawn. Let's look at two options before we close this line. One of them is bishop to e7. I'm pinning the pawn. But I just take the bishop. Knight develops. d4. Castle. Remember, we're finishing the game with the bishop pair. So we're completely winning. Bishop g2 attacking this, this pawn. And let's say queen, queen to b6 developing. c3 creating this pawn chain that we never have to worry anymore because it's safe forever. Rook f to e8 putting the rook on the perfect place. Bishop to f4. The queen is defending b2, so we don't have to worry. Knight to d5. Best square for the knight, attacking the bishop. Bishop to g3. We're happy in this diagonal. Rook a to c8, and now castle. It's all perfectly safe. We're up a pawn, and we get to play the end game with the bishop pair. Black has played top engine moves the, the entire game in a faulty variation. Black has no moves, so position is evaluated around plus 2. Because you think about it, black doesn't really have any move that makes any progress. The knight can't go to c5 or e5. If he goes to f6, he's not threatening anything. The pawn can't really push, because he can take. The rook can't go to c7 because the bishop will be trying to double up. Also because, you know, here the, the knight will be pinned. You can attack the knight and the, the knight can't really move, he's pinned. So, and also there's no really any uh, counter-attack. There's no good open file for black. Let's make an example. So here is black to move, like let's say a5. Maybe trying to go a4, a3. Seems to be making perfect sense to me. Rook f to d1. a4. The rook is there to protect d4, so you play c4 now. So the knight has to move. Let's say knight to f6. Remember, we're up a pawn. White goes on with c5. And now there's no not much to do for the, for the black queen, because these two bishops are extremely powerful. Queen to a6 allows us to simplify and also break the pawn structure of the opponent. Queen to a7... Remains close to this pawn, but now we just play queen to b5, doubling down on this pawn. That should be it. So the, 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 the position of the black piece is really bad. So in this position, after queen to e2, pinning the pawn. We mentioned bishop e7, I'm pinning the pawn, but then we can take it. What happens after bishop d6? Normal development. This move we haven't seen. Okay, same thing, d4. Completely careless of this move. 
rook to h4. Looks like a free pawn. Crazy enough we have to take. And now after the queen comes here to h4, what to do? Bishop to g2. Continue development, prevent the queen from going too far. And now, okay, let's make an example. Let's say black castles. Knight to c3 is the best move. And the idea is to simply play queen f3. This is deadly. And it's not really easy to stop. As a matter of fact, it just can't, can't be stopped at all. Our, our king is absolutely safe. So let's say, for example, rook e8, queen f3. So, and in this position, after bishop g2, what if the queen goes to h2, attacking the bishop? Knight to e3, defends everything. Queen g1 check, bishop to f1. All under control. Knight g to f6, developing. Queen to f3, going for the weakness. Castle, saving that for the moment. Bishop d2. And now we're going to be able to castle alongside and we're completely winning this other game, especially after bishop g2. What happens after black tries to open the center, let's say e5? Still, we ignore it. We don't care about the pawn. Castle long. They take our pawn, but it doesn't matter. Because bishop to g2 comes with this threat. The queen is under attack. So black is losing a lot of material. So that's not possible. What if instead he had up on the first place queen to h2? Okay, g5. Attacks the knight. It's a fantastic position to play. It's an excellent position to play. Black gets even more passive if he moves the knight, trying to save the knight, let's say knight to h5, to make an example, because knight g4 wins the queen. And in this position, if instead of moving the knight, black looks for the exchange, queen f3, I mean queen f4. Okay, take, pawn takes, and I play knight to c4. There's an attack here, an attack here, and we're going to win material, unless our opponent plays knight to e8, defending everything. But now white capitalizes with bishop to h3, pinning the knight and allowing us some tremendous potential checks. We've got bishop uh, going the knight as well. Let's see what happens after b5, giving the, the king possibility to move somewhere, not being too scared of this check. But still, you just do this check. And now we got double attack on the knight. So the king will have to stick around. Uh, it, will, it will have to be king to c7. But we got double attack of two minor pieces and opponent only has, only has the rook. So we're just going to take. So back in this position, after g5, what if black gets active and just says, you know what, take my knight, I'll take yours. This looks like the best move. Okay, knight c4, same thing. That's, that's what we're going for. Knight to e8, protecting. Knight to a5 is the best move now, because we're threatening this. Knight to c5, protecting and developing. But now we capitalize with b4 and we're winning material and there was nothing else like it is not like this can be stopped in any way the queen is completely out of game so the whole thing of going to h2 there you know just didn't, didn't lead anywhere so here let's make a recap we're gonna go through the other move um knight f3 and now bishop g4 h3 so one of the things we haven't seen in this line we've seen a lot of this bishop f3 queen takes f3 one of the things we haven't seen is from the line with e6 as we know now we have to go to e2 we explained i already explained in the uh, in some of the previous videos when, when i covered this setup the reason why you shouldn't swap here never swap always wait for them to take you and the whole thing about knight f6 knight takes and then knight takes how it's favorable for white go check those videos anyway bishop e2 Knight f6, here you still don't push, this is a tricky thing, It's a, you shouldn't push here because when the knight moves, stuck in here and you play d4, then they play c5, and you lose the center because you have a knight in c3, and this pawn in d4 can't be defended by another pawn, you lose the, the center in such a simple and silly way, so after knight f6, calm down, carry on with castle, and now, we're going to go through bishop e7, first let's quickly mention, mention bishop to d6, it's a popular idea here, so we have to see it. D4 comes now with the threat of E5 winning already. So, two options. One of them being... I mean, they're, they're both stupid. Let's look at the first one. Bishop to C7, getting out of the way. What to do? Now E5 comes. The reason is simple. When the knight goes to, to D7, we don't have to worry about C5, because now this bishop is no longer here in the... Back rank, where is defending the pawn in g7. Now we created a weakness in g7. We play queen to g4 and we are taking here. It's going to be a disaster. Our opponent cannot castle for the simple reason 
bishop h6 with his material so it's threatening mate you know it would exchange and obviously g6 is really stupid because there's a permanent weakness on the dark square we could explore that i mean we've explored that so much in this channel in so many uh, variations or especially in the french defense or the pirts or the caro Khan. so well there's going to be a line where i explore it in this video as well but let's not look at it now so in this position after e5 attacking the knight what happens after knight to e4 this is really stupid because you, you just win a pawn there's absolutely no compensation whatsoever here there's no worth looking at this so here in this position the last thing we're going to look at is this move knight to g8 the reason is that they can try some sort of Vinaver type of move like knight d7, knight g6 and carry on with this uh, unbelievably annoying and boring and stupid game. So queen to g4 comes now targeting g7. Knight to e7 is not an ideal move. This is not like in the Vinaver when you take in g7 and then rook g8 gives development. There's absolutely nothing because the center is closed. And after taking the pawn in h7... Remember, there's a pawn in c6. When the opponent plays the French Vinaver, they have a knight in c6 defending e7. In this situation, they have a pawn in c6, and you are in perfect time to play bishop g5 eventually, and attack the knight, remove the defender, and take the rook, forcing your opponent to play rook to f8, and then the position becomes extremely passive, and you're completely winning. Okay, so in this position, instead of knight e7, what if g6? Right. Very similar to what you always do in this type of position, bishop g5 attacking the dark squares knowing that you can't be attacked by a pawn so you're happy queen d7 okay knight a4 trying to go to c5 from where the knight will be ruling the universe can this be stopped let's say knight to a6 stopping knight c5 this already doesn't work now you might argue okay what if b6 okay but that penalizes the, the dark square bishop and this pawn can never really move and white is going to go on with c4 open the file for this rook also i'm going to mention the plan of c4 in a bit so let's go through this knight a6 obviously we play this move bishop takes pawn takes here was the threat knight c5 attacking the queen the queen will have to move we also have a lot of pressure over this square this is really dangerous queen to c8 it seems that you know it kind of works c4 so this is the move that was going to happen anyway the knight in c5 cannot be attacked by any pawn so c4 Obviously, taking back would be a, a, a nightmare of a silly pawn structure. Besides, the rook in c1 would be able to take this pawn no matter what and achieve the goal of being in an open file. Rook to b8, attacking this pawn. Let's see what to do. Ignore it. Take here. Remember, we're threatening to go here and, uh, you know, this king uh, is on borrowed time. So, pawn takes back. If black had taken with this pawn, for example, then, you know, after the swap, you're winning this pawn as well. And there's no weaknesses completely winning end game so let's say black takes with this uh, with the c pawn rook f to c1 bishop to b6 trying to get rid of this unbelievable knight y you can't really you can't really go rook b8 now looks like a free pawn but when when the knight moves let's say knight e6 you've got an attack on c7 fantastic position to play completely winning so bishop to b6 queen e2 protecting this square h6 cannot happen because you will just play knight to a6 remember the the queen is protecting a6 so the queen is under attack of the rook the knight's attacking the rook the queen can't take the knight because the knight is protected so that move h6 attacking the bishop cannot happen what if instead black takes this unbelievable knight okay rook takes with an attack on the queen queen to b7 reinforcing the attack on b2 that doesn't work remember queen b2 fall for a very simple tactic rook check and then you can take the queen well, not necessarily but you're winning at least the rook and the game okay rook a to c1 comes now h6 attacking the bishop rook to c7 is the best move we're gonna close the line here there's absolutely nothing to do for our opponent as soon as the queen moves away maybe we can go to a6 and then put even more attack over c8 we don't really care about this bishop at this point okay so let's do one more recap because we need to see another thing we haven't seen bishop g4 h3 so we're looking at the early capture. Queen takes back. Early e6. Super annoying. Bishop e2. Knight f6. Don't be tempted to push. That's a mistake. Castle. And we let's have a look once again at bishop d6. We play d4 threatening e5. What if black takes this, this pawn? This is the best move. 
However, this is just giving up the, the whole point of this variation, I mean, of the Karokan, the whole point is to keep this center. Now we're going to take, 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 and Black's basically got absolutely nothing. He lost the control he had over c4 and e4. That point d5 is gone, and uh, achieving nothing because we have the bishop pair. So that's that's just stupid. Okay, let's go on with development. Knight d7, maybe going to uh, d, uh, f6. Okay, a4 is the crucial move here. It just stops b5 from happening. Knight f6, attacking the queen. Queen f3. Let's look at this type of idea which we haven't seen. h6. Also because look at these two bishops, right? Castling is just not recommended. I mean, what are you going to do? You want to castle here. It's not like black is lost or anything. Actually, not at all. The game is playable. It's just black has no reason to play like this because the only ones that have attacking chances now are us. It's an open game. It's a bishop pair. Our opponent doesn't have any control of the center. So now well, we're going to go on with g3, and we're going to go through a line like king g2 and so on. I'm going to explain this line in a minute, so I'm not going to go through it now. I'm going to explore the idea of, of h6, and then there will be a chance later to talk about g3, king, uh, king g2, and how to carry out that attack. So in this position, let's say h6. The idea is to play and move like knight h7 and come into the game maybe like this. Also stopping a potential pin, uh, bishop g5. Okay, c3, build a strong pawn chain, castle. And now here we are again, right? G3, and basically, I mean, if black had castled before, he would play G3 and carry on with that attack. There's no, nothing is ever wrong with playing C3 in this type of structure. Okay, so let's carry on with the attack. What to do now? Let's say if black plays C5, typical move to attack this pawn, try to isolate it and uh, undermine our control of the center. You just take, take, take. Free pawn with no, no disadvantage, with no compensation whatsoever. You also can play B4. You got these three pawns against one. Uh, it gets easier now. So let's go back a move. So the pawn was in c6. What if, uh, I don't know, queen to c7. Completely normal looking move. Okay, well, bishop to h6, right? The pawn takes back and you're infiltrating with the queen. The pawn doesn't take back. You just won a pawn and you broke the, the king side even more. Right? So what if instead rook to e8? A more normal move. Okay, carry on with the attack like this. King g2. So here's the moves. e5, trying to activate this rook. This looks like a completely fine position for black if you think about it. But actually no. Take, take. Rook to d1, attacking the queen. Queen to c7. Bishop to c4. Fantastic position for white. Look how good the, the pieces are placed. Rook a to d8. Bishop e3, finishing development. Well, so let's look at this move. a6, stopping that. Okay, rook take, take. Rook e1. Exploiting the loose pieces. This, 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 these are all loose pieces. And yeah, we'll have to take the game from here. White has the better chances. He, he played the end game with the bishop pair. Remember that I've kept this I've kept this video for the end. This is probably I guess this is the final chapter of the Karokan saga. I've made like 17, 18 videos or something about it. I don't have much more to say. Just study from the video. Just study from the videos, try to learn as much as you can from these setups. They will occur all the time. Remember all the principles. We're not going to remember theory until move 20. It's, it's insane. Let's just see a couple of more moves just to see how to take the game. Knight to d5, attacking this bishop. Crazy enough, here we play h4, leaving the bishop to be taken. Knight takes, rook takes back. With a lot of pressure over this square. With th we're threatening bishop f7, check. Forcing the queen to go there, take, 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 blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, win a pawn and have a much better chances in the end game. So let's make an example. B5, he attacking the bishop, just take. Right? As we explained, you, win, you, you know, it's just much better for for our opponent. The, our opponent isn't really going to take our pawn in A4. If they do, they have a double asset pawn. You target it with the rook and you win it. A move like bishop to D6 is met with A5. This is the thematic move. This is a Zugzwang. This pawn will never push. Unless our opponent wants two isolated pawns. Let's look at this move. Instead of bishop d6, we need bishop f6 to stop our influence over f7. Okay, queen to e4. Idea maybe of bishop d3 going for a uh, going for a checkmate. And uh, you know, loads of threats. Queen to d6. The queen's protecting the rook. We don't have much now. So a5, this is the key move. Queen to c5, rook to f3. Now, crazy, because 
the idea of queen to c5 was obviously to attack this uh, isolated, uh, it's not isolated, to attack this lonely pawn. And you can't really play b4 because then the pawn in c3 becomes weak. But the best thing to do here, let's say, after rook f3, if black takes the pawn, you have this plan rook takes. Pawn takes back, you know, we win a piece. So uh, if pawn takes back, then you got this check. King moves. Obviously, if you move f8, you got mate. He moves here. I don't know, maybe take, 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 or something. Check again. And now bishop f7. Threatening mate in h6. This is unstoppable. Black's only move here will be queen to d5. Check. And then we just carry on the game like this. So in this position, we didn't go through bishop b4. This only deserves a very quick mention because it's a really bad move. Here you can play e5 immediately. If the knight goes back, then you play d4. And if black plays c5 now, did we just lose the center? Did, what are we going to do now? You, don't, you can't really take this pawn because knight e5 is really strong. You can't really defend this pawn with another pawn. That's impossible. But now you just play queen to g3. This is a great move because now there's a pawn in d4. So you might wonder, okay, what if here, instead of d4, what if we, here, instead of d4, we just go queen to g4, attacking here and here. The problem is, after bishop takes, and then you go to g7, attacking the rook, then bishop takes e5, attacking the queen, protecting the rook, protected by the knight. It's really dangerous, you're going to have to take back, but there's no point. Here the best move was d4, c5, queen to g3. And after pawn takes... Now, the bishop no longer is able to go to c3 and attack this diagonal. So, queen to g7 is sitting very peacefully, very quietly in that square. We don't have to worry about anything. Rook f8 only moved to save the rook. And now, knight to b5. Saving the knight. We don't, really, we don't seem to have any square, any attack or anything here. But let's say, for example, if black plays a6, okay, where we're taking d4, we're completely winning. Position evaluated almost plus 4. Zero weaknesses for us, nothing to do for black, black can castle, we got the bishop pair. So the plan clearly didn't work. So in this position, after knight f6, yeah, uh, I mean after bishop b4, you play e5 straight away. What if black just takes here in c3 and, and defends the knight like that? Let's look at this because we've never looked at anything like this before. Queen to c3 surprisingly, and then uh, that's it. The game basically goes on normally. Um, if knight goes to e4, attacking the queen, queen e3. Remember what's happening now. d3 traps the knight. The knight can't move anywhere. That means the our opponent will have to do something about it. Okay, b6 seems to work. Because f5 here doesn't work, this type of move. Always in this position, uh, f5 doesn't work. You might wonder, uh, f5 might work. Of course, don't take ampersand. Just play d3. Don't be tempted to take ampersand. We know you know that exists. So d3 traps the knight, right? If black plays f4 with the idea of attacking the queen, maybe, you know, uh, if the queen takes in f4, yeah, and which is, which is something that we should do in this position, actually, the knight can go up to c5, and now the knight is no longer trapped. However, the position is absolutely terrible. You play d4 now, and the knight has to move again. Knight to d7. Knight to d4, obviously, you're going to trap it. You, you also have f3. Bishop h5 now comes with check. And that's it. That's that's going to be it. G6 is the only move. But now queen to h6. We're infiltrating. Rook g8 you can take in h7. With the attack on the rook doesn't work. Pawn takes here. You just check. We're attacking this diagonal. The king moves. Then we're attacking this diagonal. It's, it's a disaster. The king moves here. But now bishop h6 should do the job. King to g8. Rook of queen g4. Infiltrating. And you, you can take it from there. And in this position, by the way, you're thinking, okay, what about b6? Does that save the knight if you play d3, knight c5? Okay, d3, knight c5, d4. Now I can't go to e4 because you can attack it again with the pawn. So knight d7, and now queen to g3. Same scenario as before, threatening g7, can't castle because bishop h6. So that's it. One more recap, and I think that might be it. So early bishop g4, attack it. Bishop takes, queen takes, e6, okay, bishop e2, develop, knight f6, castle. We've seen extensively about bishop d6, what if bishop to e7, normal development, okay, d4, castle. Looks like the most solid variation, what to do now, rook to d1. Have you noticed how we never push this pawn unless we have a reason? 
and you've seen, you 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 know the reason. You should know it by now. Queen to c7. Bishop f4 developing. This cannot be met to bishop d6. So that's a good reason to play e5. Queen to b6 then attacking the pawn. Rook to b1 preventing that. We don't want the queen to go and take that pawn. What to do now? Let's just mention this last line, last couple of ideas, and then we close this video. We know enough about how to beat the Karakan. Okay, let's say for instance h6. Idea of going to h7 with the knight. Okay, we attack the knight now. Knight to h7. Uh, knight to h7, bishop to d3 comes now, which means, let's make an example, if the bishop goes to g5, threatening to swap with us, and take our bishop pair, which seems to be making sen uh, making perfect sense, this is not good, because bishop takes, king takes, take, 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 and then we're winning this pawn, so that fails in a miserable way, like Zinedine Zidane, when he decided to make the most violent act he ever committed on the last game of his career. A true cherry on the cake. What a gentleman. So in this position you're wondering, what if knight to g5 attacking the queen? Does that force us to give the bishop pair away? No, because queen to h5 is a winning position for white because you're threatening to play h4. And now all the threats of the world occur. Look at this. Look at these two bishops, the queen. So in this position, what if instead of this h6 idea, trying to take away the bishop pair with this plan, of knight to g5 or bishop to g5, what if black just develops, right? What are you going to do now? Okay, you play e5. Knight to e8. Only square. b4. Stopping idea of c5. Okay, let's look at this. f6. How do you deal with f6 in such positions? This looks like our opponent will be able to take here, and that's going to be it. No, queen to g4 is the best move. Either black plays f5, creating a, a permanent weakness on e6, and that doesn't come with any threat, or black actually does take, but now you can take this, and obviously king h8, then you can take this knight, black can take your bishop, but then you can take this bishop, and you wrap material. If instead of moving the rook blocks, instead of king h8, the rook blocks, then you simply take this pawn. Again, a rook takes here doesn't work because, you know, the rook just happens to be pinned. Did you, did you even realize that? Oh, by the way, thank you for the 4,000 subscribers. Keep, keep it going and uh, keep liking my videos. So see you next time.